God's love for us, right? Okay? Our love for God, we need to love God, but suddenly our love for God is not consistent. Do you love God every day? I said, do you love God with all of your heart every day? Do you love God with all of your soul every day? Do you love God with all of your, you know, strength, possession every day? As much as we want to love God, but we are not consistent on loving God. Amen. But thank God His love for us is consistent. It will never change. It will never fail. Are we still here? So God said, you know what? Listen to Him. Listen to Him. Praise the Lord. Listen to Him. Okay, now, let, let's go back Matthew chapter 17. Listen to Him. So God said, hear ye Him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and, and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. The Father just had said, Listen to Him. Listen to Him. Amen. And what were the very first words that Jesus Christ spoke? That the disciples heard. Arise, be not afraid. Why? First John chapter 4. Perfect love casts out fear. Now go with me again. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Oh, glory to God. <clears throat> In verse 7, beginning verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. As I said, you know, we need to love one another. We need to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our soul. But notice the emphasis of John in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Notice that the emphasis was on the love of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Notice the emphasis is on God's love toward us. Because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Now verse 10, Herein is love. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. Herein is love. Not that we love God. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. I would like to paraphrase this. Here in his love, not that we obeyed the law. Because we cannot obey the law. But that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So notice the emphasis. God's love for us. Amen. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So notice the emphasis. The love of God. Okay? Now just drop down to verse 16 again. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. Now this is a, 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 a mistranslation or a poor translation in the King James Version. Because here, you know, if you will read in the authorized King James Version, you know, it is as if, you know, uh, this verse is giving emphasis on our love being made perfect. But the new King James said, Herein is love being made perfect among us. And that is the love of God. Being made perfect among us. Herein is our love made perfect, or the love of God being made perfect among us, that we may have boldness. Say boldness. Okay? That we may have boldness. Now, bold, under the word boldness, what does boldness mean? Mean. Boldness means what? No condemnation, no fear. That's boldness. No condemnation, boldness before God. No fear, boldness before the devil. That's boldness. God said, you know, come boldly unto the throne of God's grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. So boldness is equivalent to no condemnation. Boldness is equivalent to no fear. Okay, you can write it down. Okay, now let's go on. 
First John chapter 4. That we may have boldness. Okay. Where are we now? Eighteen? Okay. Uh, verse 17. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. As Jesus Christ is, so are we in this world. As Jesus Christ is the Father's beloved, so are we in this world. We are also the Father's beloved like Jesus. The Father loves you as much as He loves Jesus. Amen? Turn to your neighbor again and say, You are the Father's beloved. Because as, as He is, so are we in this world. Not when we get to heaven, right now in this world. Now verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now verse 19, We love Him because He first loved us. Notice the emphasis. We love Him because He first loved us. Without God first loving us, we cannot love Him. Without God first loving us, we cannot love one another. So the emphasis is on God's love. Amen? But uh, in verse 18, I say again, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Now, ano po itong perfect love na tinutukoy dito? Okay? Which is perfect love? God's love for you or your love for God? Which is more perfect? God's love for us. Okay, no doubt, this is talking about the love of God. Perfect love, which is the agape love of God, casts out all fear. Amen? Praise God. Now, going back, now, 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 uh, I want you to go back to, to the book of Genesis. Now, last time I shared with you the nature of Satan's temptation. When he tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. Then later on when he tempted Jesus. Now when he tempted Jesus again, we found out that the devil intentionally dropped the word what? Beloved. The father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then the devil came, you know, and he said, if you be the son of God, command this, bre- this stone to be made bread. So intentionally, Satan dropped the word beloved. In other words, the devil doesn't want Jesus to dwell. The devil doesn't want Jesus to meditate on the truth that the Father loves him. Amen? So, in other words, he tempted Jesus Christ. And the the nature of his temptation was, he tempted Jesus Christ to doubt the love of God. Okay? At nakita rin po natin, ganun din po. Ang ang nature ng temptation ng Diablo, no kanya pong tinukso si Adan, si Eva. In the garden. He tempted the devil, or rather the devil tempted Adam and Eve to doubt the love of God. Now again, in Genesis chapter 3, in verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Notice what the devil said in verse 1, Yea, has God said, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yung bang sinabi ng Diyos sa inyo, na hindi nyo magagawang kainin lahat ng punong kahoy doon sa garden? Now, what kind of God? What kind of God you have? Anong klaseng Diyos meron kayo? Ang totoo niya, talagang hindi kayo talagang mahal ng Diyos. Kasi kung talagang mahal kayo ng Diyos, eh bakit meron si ipinagkakait sa inyo? The fact na meron isang punong kahoy na ipinagkakait sa inyo ang Diyos, ibig sabihin, hindi talaga kayo mahal ng Diyos. Okay? The fact na meron siya ipinagkakait sa inyo, hindi talaga kayo mahal ng Diyos. Okay, that was the nature of temptation. So Satan tempted Adam in Eve to believe and to think that the Father doesn't love them that much. Because the devil knows. Once you begin to doubt the love of God for you, it is easy for you to doubt His word. 